In the previous two videos we looked at the if statement and how to use it in a nested way. But what we also did was fairly easy logical tests. Now we are going to look at more difficult logical tests. So let's say that we have two variables and we are going to look at an example. Our management told us that we want to reward our customers with a $5,000 bonus if they have a status of silver and a rating of one. So here we can hear that in our logic, there are two things that need to be true. Right, so let's start with our if statement. Is if tab. And then we are going to use the and function because two things have to be true in order to um, give us a bonus of $5,000. And both of them need to be true. So the first thing that needs to be true is that the status equals silver. The second thing that needs to be true, and we type a comma, and we can do a logical two, is that the rating equals one. And you could continue this, but for now we only have two variables. We just close it and now we are back in our logical if statement. So this is the logical test. We are typing a comma and if this is true, so if D2 is silver and E2 is one, then $5,000 is rewarded. If it's not true, then zero. And I would close our function, press enter, and we can see zero, which is great because this one doesn't even have a status and the rating is four. Now let's copy this and see what happens. And what we can see is that only one customer uh, has this, silver and one. A good thing to do is just to test your function. Does it work or does it give zero every time? And was this a glitch? Well, let's see how that works. Um, here we have silver and we could just change the rating into one. And now we can see 5,000. So that's a great way to just test it out. It's, it's good to test your if statements. Let's undo this and we are back. Now we are going to change it a little bit. Press F2 and let's say that someone says, okay, okay, maybe this is a little bit too harsh. Uh, you need to be silver and um, you have to have a rating of one. We are going to change that. And if someone has either a silver status or a rating of one, we're going to give him $5,000. It is very easy to do that because there's not only end, there's also or. And now what we're telling Excel is if either one of these is true, then the logical test says true, right? So with and both of them need to be true with or either one of them needs to be true for the logical test to return true. So to go to that part, let's see how that works. Now we press enter and we just copy this and now we get one more because this one doesn't have a rating of one, but it does have a silver status. And we can test this again. So this one doesn't have a rating at all and a, a, a status at all. And this one has a rating of three. Let's change that to one. And there it is, $5,000. So undo that to get our data back to the original state. And we can continue with something more difficult. I deleted everything here and we now have a empty bonus column. Um, the empty bonus column should be filled with numbers again, but now it's more complex. And in this example, I'm going to do a combination of a lot of things. And the combination will be a, uh, an if statement with a nested if. We are going to use the end statement or function, the X or and not, right? So what is the question from our management? We want to give our clients a bonus and it's a $15,000 bonus if they have no negative rating in one of the two years. So if one of them is positive, that's fine, but the status cannot be empty. So if that's true, then they get $15,000, which is great. But if both of them are negative, they get nothing. And if both of them are positive, they get $20,000. And we are going to do this in one statement. So bear with me, we are going to go slow and we're going to do this. 
We start off with our if statement. If. And what we can hear from the first part is that the status needs to be filled. And, and there you have it, either one of these needs to be positive. So the and statement is the first thing that we heard. Let's say and, right? The first logic is not empty. Okay, so let's use not for that. The not function, not status is empty. And you can do empty like that, right? Okay, so that's the first one. First logic in our and is that. Then we do a comma, but now we have a problem because either one of them needs to be positive. Hmm. Let's check for that. We are going to use the XOR function and I'm going to go slow. The XOR wants two logic or three or four or five, but we only have two here and I'm just going to put it in there. So B2 needs to be greater than zero or C2 needs to be greater than zero. You might think now, well, you can use OR for this. Why are you using XOR and what is XOR anyway? Well, XOR is exclusive OR. And the problem is in the second part of the thing that we need to build, because if both of them are positive, then we have a problem. If both of them are negative, then we also have a problem. So what we need to know here is that if this part of our if statement returns true, that only one of them is positive. And if we do just the regular or statement, then both of them can be positive. If both of them are positive or both of them are negative, the X or will return false, which makes the end false because both of them are not true. And that tells the if statement to go to the false part, right? Think about that. And it's good to check this function out. So we're going to use X or we want to be sure that only one of them are, is positive and not both of them. So let's continue this. This was the logical two. And now we can see that we have three references here and the logical two is all we need because the X or ends there. So we're going back into the end and we don't need another statement in the end because we only have these two. So we close that one too. And now we're back in our logical test from our if statement. Well, the logical test is done for this one. So we're going to use a comma. If this is true, people get $15,000, $15,000. But if this is false, then we need to check are both of them positive or are both of them negative, right? So this is where our nested if comes into play. If the logical test is if, and now we need to do and because both of them need to be positive. That's what we're going to check. And B2 is greater than zero. And the next logic is C2 is greater than zero, right? We're going to close the end function here. So we're back in the nested logical test. That one is done too. If this is true, then both of them are positive, right? And then they get $20,000. If this is false, then we know that both of them are negative because our X or already covered the other option where one of them is positive, right? So we can just type zero here. Then we close this. So now we closed our um, nested if, and now we are back into our regular if, and we need to close that one too. And then we press enter and it says zero. Well, is that a good value? Let's see. One of them is positive. So that could give them a $15,000 bonus, but the status is empty. So that's a good thing. Let's copy this. And let's see what happens. The second one is 15,000. Okay. Well, the status is not empty. They're not both positive, but one of them is positive, this one. So they get $15,000. Same here. Let's continue. Here we have a $20,000 reward. Why is that? Because the status is empty, but both of them are positive. So that's a great thing. 
Now let's take a look at here. Here they get nothing because there is no status. And here is another example. I'm going down where both of them are negative. So that one gives you zero too. And then there's a 20,000 here with two positives. So this works great. And here you see a very complex function with X or with if with and and not, right? So that's how that works. And here you can see a great example that you can combine anything in Excel. We can do references, we can do text, we can do numbers, we can do whatever we like, and we can use nested ifs with, with uh, complex functions. And basically, well, this gives you an idea of how complex things can be. Um, I already said it in the nested if uh, video. Um, maybe it's more important here that you have some human readable text where you explain how this function works and why it does what it does. Because if you come back in, let's say, six months and you read this and you don't know that the company gives these kind of bonuses, well, it's really hard to understand why you did this. And how it works, especially when it gets more complex and you have maybe three nested ifs in there with more XORs, etc. So documentation, I know it's the hardest thing to do in programming. It's something that everybody hates, but it can help you in the long run. And this is the uh, and or XOR and not video.